All right, thank you, Max. And again, congratulations, everyone. This is an incredible turnout. I mean, Toronto is poised to be, if not already, the leader in travel technology. And that's gonna, I think that's good for everybody, everybody here. Um, I'm really excited to be the opening talk um, among so many technology and travel enthusiasts here in Toronto. I'm the founder and CEO of Crowdriff. For those who don't know, we are a visual marketing platform that specializes in travel. We started out focused on user-generated content, the photos and videos all of us tend to share when we're enjoying a great meal, or I saw someone literally stand on their chair once to get a good bird's eye photo of their food. Um, you know, you're flying somewhere new, you're having a new experience, or all the professional photos that are being taken and, and necessary to help inspire people to travel. We primarily work in this market um, with something called destination marketing organizations. And I don't know if many of you have heard of this, but even the city of Toronto has an organization called Visit Toronto or Tourism Toronto. Almost every city, town, county, country, state, province has an organization that's charged with the marketing of their destination and driving the economic impact and growth. Along with that, we work with attractions, theme parks, resorts, cruise lines, you know, Rocky Mountain near out west, really anything that um, people need to market visually. And given our scope of work in this industry, we've had a chance to work with folks from small two-person teams that are marketing uh, a little county or town, all the way up to Tourism Colorado, Princess Cruise Lines, and their needs around visual content. Oh. So, this is an incredibly fragmented space. I completely agree. And the consumers are, are in fact, it's hard on us, right? If you're trying to plan a trip, um, I was just trying to plan a trip. I started on YouTube, and I was looking at all the drone videos for the different countries I want to visit. Once I settled on a country, then I was moving on to Instagram. I was using their new collections feature to try and find the right photos. Then I'm on Google Flights, booking my flights. I'm forwarding that to something like TripIt to organize all my reservations. I'm using something like, I'm using Moby Trip to organize my trip and make sure I have time to get between each destination. Uh, it's wild. And I was just earlier this week in Denver at the uh, Destination Marketing CMO Summit. And Expedia did a presentation and they talked about how the typical traveler is now visiting 140 websites in the 45 days prior to booking their trip. And that represents an interesting challenge for all these brands in the marketing space because they need to find really unique and interesting ways to intersect with that activity. Because you might not travel right away. You might be looking for inspiration for a trip in a month or a year, or you might not even visit that attraction the first time that you go there. But they're charged with having to figure out how to actually get your attention and then figure out if that's working. So what we did is we wanted to understand the overall marketing stack, not just where Crowdriff fit, but of course, it's useful to know that so you know where you fit. Um, but we used our experience in the industry and we sent out a marketing uh, survey essentially to understand all the different tools that these attractions and uh, destination marketers are using. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of them. Some of the more established ones are, you know, your CMS, uh, your digital asset manager, things of that nature. Uh, social media management is certainly permeated into this, which makes a lot of sense because we're all showing these photos. It's a great way to engage with travelers. As far as rising adoption, there's starting to be more work around personalization. Um, we're seeing platforms that are coming out with not entirely personalized experiences. Like, I dream of going to a, a tourism website or, or uh, you know, an attraction website and all the photos literally updating to something that matters to me. Am I going on a trip with my family? Am I going on business? Am I an adventure person? What kind of other things am I looking at? Um, right now, what I'm seeing in the industry is uh, some more, more segmentation, I guess, than personalization. So platforms like uh, Get Smart Content is a company that, um, based on where you are and what website you're looking at, they're doing um, some segmentation. If you're looking at a site in Florida, uh, it will say, 
hey, Florida is where, you know, is your destination from California, you're gonna love it. And they really try to call that out. Or they know if you're, if you're here and you're looking at Canada Wonderland's website, let's say, they know that you're local and they can market to you in different ways right there within their site. And CMPs are different, we're, of course, they're different than like a CMS. So content marketing platforms, we're seeing some of the bigger travel brands start to really think about this, start to think about breaking their content down into little building blocks and little Lego pieces, essentially, that can be compiled and personalized in all these different experiences, whether that's eventually in sort of your, maybe your car dashboard or website or ad or who knows on your fridge in the future. Um, so this is a really interesting up and coming area in content marketing platforms and content creation around the space. And of course, on the horizon with uh, artificial intelligence, these sorts of things, augmented reality, you know, I love the idea of the new Google Earth VR and the idea to literally fly around the world and see destinations. I think it's gonna cause a lot more people to want to travel. Uh, Chatbots, we're seeing destination marketers are posting numbers that you can text to ask questions about, hey, where should I go and eat? They're finding the challenge is simply getting the word out so that they can collect enough questions and data to apply the artificial intelligence to, of course, eventually answer those questions automatically. Um, of course, there's Snap Travel also here in Toronto that's using chatbots to, uh, to help you book hotel rooms. And as far as the people, the kind of sort of people in this space, um, a lot of the people that we're encountering in travel come from a PR and communications background. So even the idea of building an integrated marketing stack is kind of a daunting task for them. At times they'll turn to an all-in-one solution, like say purchasing an entire, the entire Adobe suite or something and, and think it's all gonna be great from here. Um, and although that seems initially convenient, uh, they realize you're giving up levels of functionality and, and certainly um, some levels of ease of use in specific um, you know, workflows and functionality that you need. And so really what I'd suggest is as all of us as technology vendors should be focusing on how can we, we, we help really make our products integrate better with everything else that is used specifically in travel and sometimes not in travel. Um, it's also been interesting to see how you know, travel has, has had a hard go of it, I, I think, the last five years or so. Um, the companies that have been specializing in travel, I don't know if they've reached really the growth rate to invest deeply in R&D to bring a lot of new innovations to the space. And so there's this interesting mix of like travel specialists or travel tech specialists um, that are frankly just behind in a lot of ways uh, over sort of a lot of more modern, modern technology used by big brands. And then there are some destination marketers and attractions that are going ahead and adopting something like Salesforce and just trying to configure it to work for them. So whatever the case, I think that, um, you know, certainly more, more tech vendors in the market is good, more competition is gonna push more innovation, and I hope everybody remains, you know, with a really open platform. And if you're selling into the travel vertical, certainly consider ease of use. We found that to be absolutely key um, to, a, to adoption of technology, especially in this space. Um, some of the really smart folks in the, in the travel space, some of the attractions and destinations, they're investing deeply in hiring uh, even sort of uh, data scientists, um, sort of deep digital marketers that are working with really modern technology. But, uh, but many of them are, um, you know, need software that they can adopt really quickly. And keep in mind, of course, the technology is not the solution in itself. Um, we've been trying to play a really big role in the education of the industry and um, to the industry overall, even when it's not about our product. So make yourself a, certainly a, a trusted market leader and work alongside other partners in that endeavor. So in closing, you know, at Crowder, if we know that a great picture or video affects us deeply as humans, it affects us emotionally, it helps inform us. And so together with partners, with our customers, our vision, our mission is to help every traveler, local, you and me, always see what matters when we're traveling. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, 
we've got a couple of minutes for questions. So if you have a question, just put up your hand and we'll run over with the mic. Anybody, anybody? What's the biggest impediment selling a new technology to uh, any of the basically travel providers? Like the biggest challenges in initially breaking in? Yeah. Um, it's a really, like these are really tight knit communities and I know that that's common you know, in different industries, but especially we're finding in travel. They are, there are some very clear leaders that are known for adopting something new and if you can identify who those people are, it can really help. I mean, we're, we're growing in Europe now, but when we initially flew, flew over to Europe and we were doing conferences and meetings, their question was, oh, who else in Europe do you work with? And we were like, oh, well, we work with like hundreds of customers in North America, all these great names did not matter. So like, it's, in this kind of space, it's really finding those, those early innovators. We were really fortunate our first customer almost got it before, I think he got it more than even I did at first. Like he totally saw the, the potential um, and bought the product almost before there was one totally finished um, and still a customer today. So we're really identifying those, those respected people in the industry. Anyone else? I think just following up to that question as well, and you mentioned there's a couple of leaders and um, laggers in this industry. Who are some of the examples of the leaders and the innovators in this industry that you've identified from your company? Um, I've been, well, just recently at this conference in Denver, and I've been watching them for a few years. Uh, like there's a, there's a company called Arrivalist, um, and they help with, they help with essentially tracking um, like using pixels on your phone and on your laptop to know where you're traveling around the world and making sure that they can tie that back to the email or the ad or whatever you saw, um, which works, works well for the larger brands who are investing in that. I think the smaller tourism brands are just interested in like workflow efficiency generally. Um, that's one of the companies I've been really impressed with. Um, yeah, that's probably my best example right now. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd uh, love to hear your take on, on sponsored content. Because um, user-generated content, I'm, I'm finding the trend, especially on Instagram these days, uh, you see a, a destination, Florida, California, anywhere, and then someone writes something, and then you see ad, or sponsored, or spawn, or some hashtag, which makes me think, well, how many of these are actually n not even hashtagged, and you don't even know that the tourism board is potentially sponsoring someone, so I'd like to hear your take as an industry uh, Rep. You mean, you mean sponsoring someone like, like paying for a certain photo to be taken? Yeah, because the, the, I think the lines are being blurred between user generated content. I think of someone who's not paid yeah. to, to post that photo, for example. And that, I think that is affected if I know they're being paid. Um, so probably not directly related to your business, but I'm just curious what you think about that. Well, in a way, like, like in a sense, what CrowdRef does is allow each of these brands to sort of hyper-curate um, the set of what photos that are already being taken. So you're not looking at the total raw feed of the photos, say, being taken at an attraction or, or a beach or a ski resort. The brand has curated them. But in nearly like, all cases, these are just real, genuine experiences. Like, like a video will come up where there's a father hiking and daughter in like a backpack, and they'll look back and smile and she'll high five them along the trail. And there's like these experiences that could just can't be conjured up or, or scripted. Um, I do think people are resistant to like deeper sponsored content, like do this itinerary. Because I think that us as travelers, we try to find this balance. We take pride in building our own trip. But um, but with a sponsored content, sometimes that people actually are drawn towards it because it's a collaboration with someone who knows the location or what to see and do really deeply. We've got to close our Q&A for now for the next speaker, but uh, I encourage you to, to ask questions to Dan right after. Yeah, thanks so much, Dan.